Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In the last episode, I think I said we were going to go ahead and go into the swamp, and that is exactly what we are going to do. You might notice, actually, right out of the gate that there was something different on the screen. And that, I believe it's different, because I think I bought the map. I forgot to buy the map in the last episode, and I think I went ahead and did it off camera. I can't remember at this point, but in any case, we do now have the map down there in the bottom right. It was 20 rupees, and I bought it from Tingle on that screen back there where we got that one heart piece in the last episode. But speaking of screens, I guess that's not really the best way to introduce this area. This little area we're in right here, here I wanted to say that it kind of looks like that area before the Great Deku Tree in Ocarina of Time, and that's kind of a really cool... I mean, it's not really a big deal, it's just one little hallway, pretty much. But it kind of adds a lot, especially if you played Ocarina of Time, and that's one reason why I like Majora's Mask. It has a whole lot of that new stuff, but it also has a lot of homages. Homage, homages? I, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Homages, I guess it's more of a soft J sound. Anyway, here we have a very colorful red house. It's actually a shop. If we come in here, we need to go ahead and take off our Deku Mask, because the magic hag, or whatever it said there, will not talk to us. Tee hee hee, welcome. My potions work very well, they do. Are you by chance a boat crew's customer? How unfortunate, Kome has gone into the woods out back looking for mushrooms. Hmm, now that I think about it, she's a bit late coming back. Say, could you have find her for me? Hmm, yes, it's easy getting lost in those woods. Ask the monkeys that live there. I guess we're not gonna get any help from her at this point, and why should we after all? In Ocarina of Time, you might remember her and her sister were the final boss, other than the actual final boss in the game, the boss of the final temple, I should say. And I'll talk a little bit about that in just a second, but I've always really liked the sign. Beware of ferocious turtles. Of all the warnings that could be on a sign, and Link was doing like a really slow like moonwalk there. Of all the warnings, that's a really strange warning to have on a sign, but we'll see what they were talking about in just a second. The monkey at the beginning here is supposed to lead us through the Lost Woods, or not the Lost Woods, the Mysterious Woods, I already actually forgot what they are really called, but I think I remembered the path, or I still do remember the path, through the forest, so I shouldn't actually have to follow them. If I mess it up, I'm going to be really embarrassed. But actually, speaking of paths, on days two and three, the path is different to get to the same place that we're about to go, so you can't just follow this path to get to the hag here every single time. You might have to follow the monkey on day two and three, or I would anyway. I don't remember the specific path for day two and three, but every day one, the path to get here will be exactly the same. Also, I should say, before I get started in the conversation with her, the hag in the magic potion shop will not be there on days two and three. At that point, she'll realize that her sister is actually in trouble and she will be here. But since we're on day one, I guess she decides, or she has decided at this point, that it's not really worth her time to come and try and save her because she hasn't been gone that long. But she looks like she's in trouble, so let's see what she has to say to us. I was just busy minding my own business picking mushrooms when, BAM, I got hit from behind! That pesky skull kid, did he think an old hag wouldn't recognize him if he hit his face? Ow, ow, to think he's that powerful, and now I can't even move! You, don't you have anything that gives you energy? Unfortunately, not at this point. Ah, what is this? You're no help. I say, you're not at all what you make yourself out to be. You know what, lady? I came in here to help you. I don't remember ever making any promises or even saying that I was able to help you. I just came in here because I was concerned. I may have a separate agenda for myself, but that doesn't mean that I didn't want to help you. I don't know where she was getting off saying that we're not what we make ourselves out to be unless she is referring to what we did in the first game, in which case, I'll talk about that, I think I've already said this, referring to this a minute ago, I guess they don't remember who we are from the first game, assuming that is, that Kotaki and Komei are the same exact hags from the first game, which is a little bit of a debate, I guess. If they are, in fact, the same characters from Ocarina of Time, maybe they don't remember us because we went back in time before we actually fought them as adult Link, and that's not, that's why they're not freaking out because we did put a really big smackdown on them in the first game, but enough rambling aside, let's go ahead and talk to whichever one this is, Komei or Kotaki, I forget. Tee hee hee, welcome. My potions work very well, they do. What's that? The Skull Kid got to Komei? That's ridiculous. If it's just the Skull Kid, then what harm could he possibly do? 
Oh, well, if that's true, then take this potion to her. This isn't good. And we get a bottle of red potion. I like how I knew exactly what it was going to be called. I was going to say a red potion bottle or something. I don't know. Anyway, it's actually called the bottle of red potion. I don't know why they didn't just call it a bottle with a red potion in it. I don't know what's up with my rambling today. Maybe my coffee has not settled in yet. Usually when the coffee settles in, that's when the rambling actually stops, even though maybe that doesn't make too much sense. But we need to take that red potion to Komei. Luckily, the path through the forest here is exactly the same as, like I said before, on day one, the path to get to Komei is exactly the same as it will be every time you go through here on day one after this. So if you remember the first time, you're going to be okay. I guess, like I said, they don't remember who we are, though. Because we went back in time at the end of the first game. Like, the adult section of Ocarina of Time never technically happened, I guess. So, assuming these are the same characters, that's why they do not remember us. Ow, ow, yeah! Don't you feel obligated to help a sorry old hag when you see one? Not really, but like I said before, we do have sort of an agenda here that we need to help them out. So let's go ahead and give her our only red potion. Ah, that color, that smell, that's definitely Kotake's. Ooh, feel the energy flow! Komei is revived! You saved me! I'm the Swamp Tour Guide. I run the boat cruise, so come by if you want a free ride. And we actually are going to need a free ride pretty soon, so that just happens to be, you know, a pretty lucky thing that we get a free ride from Komei, even though we couldn't have even paid for a ride before because she wasn't at the tourist office or whatever. You have strange powers, no? Me been watching you. Lately, this swamp filled with poison water. Temple above waterfall strange. Brother go to temple. But brother no able to find temple entrance. Temple for Deku only. Brother captured by Deku. Now in palace. Help! So that was a very cryptic way of telling us, I guess, if I, you know, am interpreting his words correctly, that a, those monkeys have a friend in the Deku Palace that we need to help, and we just so happen to have a free ticket on the cruise or whatever that Komei is going to give to us, and that cruise is going to take us straight to the front door of the Deku Palace, which is down there. I will meet you guys back in the shop over there, and I'm speeding this up, because we have a lot to do in this episode, so I want to go ahead and get rid of as much backtracking as possible. And here we are back in the Tourist Information Center. That wasn't actually that long of a walk back over here, so I guess it wasn't entirely necessary to speed it up. Let's go ahead and talk to her, though. Oh, thanks for what you did back there. And a special deal just for you. I'll let you take this cruise for free. Ah, uh, yes, we've got a special going on right now, so we're giving this out for free. And in addition to that free cruise ticket, we get the pictograph box, which is exactly the same as a camera. The only problem is it can only store one picture at a time. If you take a nice picture from the boat, take that fellow over there. All right, the boat's leaving. So unfortunately, we have to go on the ride right now, which actually isn't that big of a deal, but we can use that pictograph to take a picture of Tingle or the Great Deku... I was going to say the Great Deku King. I don't know if he's actually great or not. We can take a picture of the Deku King or Tingle and give it to that burly guy back in the tourist center or whatever, and he will give us a piece of heart. I don't know if you guys caught it through his dialogue the first time we talked to him, but that man in there is assumed to be, actually I think it's pretty much explicitly said, that that man in there is Tingle's father, which I he was not very proud of him as we saw in the last episode. <laughs> Luckily our ship is just the right, you know, strength or like sharpness in the front that we can stab big Octoroks in the eyes. You know, when I first saw that, the problem basically, we couldn't get over here unless we go in the boot, the boot the boat cruise because the boat is the only thing that can take out those big Octoroks right now. So even if we had tried to swim over here, we would not have been able to get this far because of that big Octorok, which is why we actually had to go in the cruise. And by the way, it said, do you want to disembark? Yes, no. Make sure you click yes, because if you click no, you got to go all the way back around and there's another big Octorok over there. Luckily, the ship is strong enough to take him out. But here's that monkey or one of the monkeys that I assume we saw earlier when we helped Komei or whatever. And by the way, here we are in the Deku Palace. The Deku Palace always had one of my favorite tracks in the game, so I want you guys to listen to that for just a second.
I guess that's long enough, but like I said, that was always one of my favorite tracks. I don't really know why. Majora's Mask is a lot of my favorite tracks in the Zelda series, believe it or not. But a lot of the tracks are duds as well, so it's kind of got both ends of the spectrum, I guess. But as soon as we put on the Deku Mask, that... Uh, I, I don't even know why I you know, started that story with as soon as. When you put on the Deku Mask, you can talk to these guards right here, and they will let you in to talk to the Deku King, basically. And by the way, they also said don't go off on the side pass. We won't be doing that right now, but pretty soon we will have a reason to, and we will be doing that. But the reason we are even allowed to go into the Deku King's chamber is because up here... I guess that part right there is too high. Come on, there we go. Up here, there is a monkey that we have to save, and that is the monkey that the other monkeys were telling us about. He's in a very precarious situation up there, so we need to get to him as soon as possible. First, though, there are a couple of fr frivolous things that I need to take care of. The first of which being I need to take a picture of the Great Deku... Or I, there I go again with the Great Title. I'm not exactly sure if he is a Great Deku King. Regardless, we need to take a picture of him. Hopefully that picture, even though it was pretty much just his eyes, was good enough. And the other thing that I want to point out is that fire right there. If you don't know, I'm pretty sure Dekus are made of wood, and Dekus are kind of weak to fire, so it's kind of weird that they have a fire pit right there in the middle of the Great Deku... I'm not going to be able to shake that great title from the Great Deku King. It's, I guess, a mixture between the Great Deku Tree and the Great Deku King. In any case, the last thing I want to show you before I talk to the King is that this scene right here, this little, I guess, screenshot, if you wanted to call it that, is actually very sad, and we will learn why that is later on. But let's go ahead and talk to the King. I haven't seen your face before. Are you visiting? Usually I don't allow the likes of you in my royal chamber, but today is different. We're about to punish the foolish monkey who kidnapped the Deku Princess. He has insulted the royal family. I'll show him what happens when you do that. That foolish monkey is up in that cage. Take a good look at his face. We already did that, so I don't really feel like we need to do that again. But that is why, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, that is why we were even able to go in there, because they are having a public humiliation session, I guess, for that monkey. And we're gonna need to stop that, because he's going to be what allows us to get in the first temple in the game. Was my brother alright? Did you see entrance to Cage? We know secret route there. Enter secret route from Outer Garden Entrance. But entrance in tall place, no one can reach it. Need Bean from Bean Cellar, live beneath Palace Garden. Hmm. I have to give you a, a little grade on your English, but yeah, I understand your meaning. Oh, you smart. Plant Bean in soft place in Outer Garden. You figure out rest. Hurry, help brother. I don't know what's up with everybody in this game, just thinking we're automatically going to help them, but I guess every character in every game has been, you know, trained to accept our help, or to beg for our help, pretty much, but if I can just get around this rock, there we go, it was actually kind of lucky, because that Deku up there in the top right will catch you. Basically, I should probably explain what this section is. It's very reminiscent of that area in Ocarina of Time at the beginning of the game, where you have to sneak into Hyrule Castle, except instead of a castle, it's more of this small palace, and there are not Hylians, I guess, guarding the entrance or guarding the castle. It is now Deku's. And I've actually heard that, and by the way, I should say that it is easier, and that kind of segues into my next topic. I've heard that the Japanese version is a lot harder than the English version. And by the way, it's about to be 6 o'clock, which means it's about to be night time on the first day, which is pretty good because now the Deku guards will have these laser beams or whatever coming out of their face, it kind of reminds me of like a connect the dots puzzle or something, even though it's a straight line. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, but basically what that is, is their line of view, which will allow us to get through the garden a little bit easier, actually a lot easier, and that's one thing I wanted to bring up about the Japanese. Uh, first of all, I've heard that either they don't have that laser type vision at nighttime, or it's a lot shorter range or something like that, or a lot longer range, I should say. That would be what makes it harder. But over here, we have the same exact guy that was in Ocarina of Time in Zora's River, so we need to go ahead and take off our mask because we need to talk to him and buy some magic beans. Well, Chomp Chomp, you're the first customer I've had in a long time. Do you need any magic beans? They sprout leaves as soon as you water them. That they do. They do. Mm, I'll give you one free sample, so try planting it in some soft soil. You can always buy more. And these beans work kind of differently than, it, than they did in Ocarina of Time, and I'll explain those in a minute. You can plant them wherever you want, but if you don't water them, they won't grow. And I want to go ahead and buy yet another set of beans here, because the first set of beans, which he said, basically told us were free. And that is true, they are free, but we need to buy another set. 
because I want to use one set of beans here in this room that we're in right now, and I want to use the other set of beans to actually progress the game. The first set of beans, first of all, we need to go ahead and read the sign. We don't need to, but I like to. First of all, I don't know how they got their free spring water, at the Swab Tourist Center, that is. I don't know how they can claim ownership of the spring down here. It's in the, right in the middle of the Deku Palace. So I'm not sure how, first of all, you know, that's a good question I just thought of. How did that guy that's selling the beans even get down here in the first place? And second of all, whoever built that sign must not have been a Deku, so I don't know how they got down here either. But, magic beans in this game work by, you plant them in the soft soil and then you water them. In the first game, or in Ocarina of Time I should say, there's a red rupee in here and I need to go ahead and fill up my water bottle again. In Ocarina of Time, they basically, if you don't, I don't know if I showed this, I must have because I got everything in the game. But in Ocarina of Time, to grow the magic beans, you had to go forward in time. Seven years. In Termina, apparently all you have to do to grow beans, and I'm just going to go ahead and get myself caught here so we can go back to the beginning. In Termina, apparently all you have to do to grow beans is plant them and water them, so that makes it a little bit easier. Now we need to go ahead and put on our Deku mask and go off to the right here because that monkey told us we need to go to the Outer Garden, I believe that's what he said. And the Outer Garden... Or actually, I'm not even sure what he was referring to. I think that part in there, maybe that's the inner garden, then maybe that would just make too much sense. But over here is where we need to plant our second bean. They have to be careful not to waste your water. I've done that entirely too many times right here. Sometimes I'll accidentally just put my water on the hole instead of planting the beans first, and that's no good. Because at that point, you have to go back all the way through that garden, back into that hole, and get more water from that pond. Unfortunately, you can't get any of the water that we just had to hop across because it is all poisoned. Now, luckily, this one actually, I think they all do this, actually. It acts as kind of like an elevator. One thing I want to show you, though. On the virtual console, for some reason, I've noticed this is a really glitchy area right here. I don't know what's up with this, but if we just walk forward, the area will spawn in like that. So I'm not sure why that happens. But at this point, we are sort of in a James Bond-esque, like, break-in sequence, I guess. We have to break into that prisoner's cage and break him out. And here we are back in the Deku King's chamber. This time we're on the right or the wrong side, I guess, if you think about it, of the prison cell. But let's go ahead and talk to the monkey. Oh, you! How did you get here? Shh, if they see you, they'll capture you. What? My brother's asked for your help? Ah, oh, I'm terribly sorry. Just try to cut my rope. We'll talk after that. So we actually do have to get up here on this box, I guess. This is what I always do. I don't know if you actually have to do this or not. And unfortunately, I jumped in the wrong direction. I don't think that'll work. What are you doing? Quick, cut this rope! Yeah, apparently that wasn't close enough. I don't know why you gotta do this, he's gonna teach us a song anyway, and it's not even gonna work. Now that should work right there. No good after all. Wait, you don't happen to have something that can make a lot of noise, like a loud instrument with sound that carries a long way. If you have one, show it to me. Well, I have this ocarina. That tiny thing will never do, its sound won't carry far enough. Don't you have something else? Actually, if we go ahead and turn into the Deku and bust on our pipes, we do have something else. Oh, you have them! You do! Just like the Princess Deku pipes! Those were great! By the way, who are you? Whoa, that's not important now! Just listen to me! I was trying to find out about the poison in the swamp, so I went to Woodfall Temple above the waterfall. But the temple had become a monster's lair and the princess was captured by the monster. Since the Deku King thinks I kidnapped the princess, he won't listen to a word I say. Now the princess is in trouble, so I must somehow hurry to the temple and save her. Do you understand my plight? Yes, yes, yes. Every monkey's always like, oh, do you understand? Yeah, I got it. So then, that means you will go in my place and save the princess. Okay, now I'll teach you the melody that opens the temple. 
The prince is talking to me. We can't let him hear us while singing softly. Everyone, did you hear that? This melody, which only the Decker royal family knows, it proves the foolish monkey deceived the princess so he could enter the temple. Everyone, let the monkey's punishment commence! You'd better take the shortcut the Deku people used to get to the Woodfall Temple! But you must hurry, if you don't I will be punished by the Deku King! And I guess they didn't give one care about the fact that we were in there with him and he taught it to us, which you would think maybe they would think we we're in cahoots with him or something, but the shortcut that he was mentioning is up here, so it's not really that hard to find. It's not really a short... I guess it's a shortcut, but I was imagining more of like a hidden shortcut in my mind, I guess. But what we need to do now is get over there, but the thing is, you cannot shoot these guys down. You actually have to get down into the Deku Flower, and when they jump up, or when they are right on top of you, you can jump up and kill them. But one thing I wanted to talk about regarding the Sonata of Awakening, which is what, like I said before, sometime, I think I mentioned this in the beginning of the episode or something, that is what is going to allow us to awaken the first temple, and I'm going to try and get this thing before I move on. I guess I wasn't close enough, but the Sonata of Awakening is a song known by the royal family in Termina that awakens people. I thought that was a really cool, and by the way, that thing over there is the spider house, I almost forgot what it was called. That is where you get gold skull tullas in this game, but we don't have the necessary equipment to finish it right now, so I will do it later. But the royal family in Termina, the Dakus, have a song of awakening that the royal family knows. In Hyrule, they have the song of basically Zelda's lullaby that the royal family knows. So I always thought that was a really cool comparison, I guess you can make, between the two royal families. Ho 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 hoot! This is a rare sight. You are a fairy child, correct? What business might you have in this poison swamp? If you dare not venture further, I shall pass no judgment. It is better that you hurry back to town. This swamp you were in has lost its guardian deity, but it was destined to fade anyway. Hoot hoot! And that destiny is not solely limited to this swamp. If you have the courage and determination to proceed in the face of destiny, then I shall teach you something useful. Before coming here, had you not seen any of the stone statues that bear close resemblance to me? I have placed these throughout the land to aid the one with the power to change the destiny of this land, wherever he may appear. If you have left proof of our encounter on any of those stone statues, then the song carved in my feet will certainly be of some assistance. Remember it well and play it wherever the need arises. From the first time you play the song, we shall become eternal friends, transcending time and place. And we have learned the Song of Soaring, which is what I was talking about a couple episodes back that lets us teleport, or not really teleport, I guess. It's kind of supposed to be flight from one owl statue to the next. And I do believe that in Japan, like I said, and I actually, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, in Japan, those owl statues did not have the capability to save, as far as I know. The only purpose of the owl statues, as far as I know, once again, because I'm not entirely sure, is that in Japan, they had the ability to warp you from one place to the next. So they are a little bit more useful than they were in the Japanese version. But here we are at the Woodfall proper, I guess. Here we need to go to the right and make our way up to that little pavilion up there that I didn't really look at. 
In our way, though, are some enemies that I do not believe are in Ocarina of Time. They are called Hip Loops, which kind of sounds like Piplup, which is a Pokemon. They might look a little bit intimidating, but they're not really, especially in your Deku form. If you just hit them with two of the Snot Bubble Blasts or whatever, they will die. The, you can hit them with your sword and take them out that way, but I've always found that using the Deku form is easiest. And, you know, speaking of the Deku bomb thing I talked about at the beginning of the Let's Play, I guess this might be the only place I would ever use that technique. And even then, you don't even really need to use that. I could have landed like halfway down the platform and pretty much completely not even interacted with that Deku in the first place. But here we are over at the pavilion type thing that I talked about before. And I do believe that Tattle is going to have some words for us here. Isn't this the Deku Scrub Mark? I wonder if they've worshipped here. Well, I don't know, but first, before we interact with that at all, I want to go ahead and hit this owl statue over here like we talked about just a few moments ago. Now we're able to teleport back here so we don't have to walk over here every time or use the Deku Hop, I guess. I want to go ahead and catch this fairy right here because I want to use it in the temple that's about to appear. I don't know if that's really a spoiler, but as soon as we play the Sonata of Awakening here on the statue, of course, you have to, or on the little panel on the ground or whatever, as a Deku, we will awaken the Woodfall Temple. And like I said, guys, that is the Woodfall Temple, which will be the first temple we do in the game. Fortunately, is a, it is a very easy temple, so I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. I felt a little bit off in this episode. I've got like a massive headache right now. I know it's not really an excuse or anything, but I felt a little bit off, so if you notice any more rambling than usual, that might be why. I'll rest up and make sure I am ready to take on the Woodfall Temple in the next episode. Once again, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys back for the next episode.